Hello children, how are you? So welcome to Samveda e-learning program. In this session, you are going to learn about, yes, that is the important chapter carbonane compounds. You are in the third session of this chapter. In this session, you are going to learn about how to give the names for these carbon compounds, their structures, chemical properties, combustion. Then let us start today's class with nomenclature. Let us understand these important set of rules. The name of any homologous series based on the carbon chain that means how many carbons are there in the chain. Let us understand these nomenclature criteria in detail. Now here are the prefixes and suffixes. What is this? This is a compound with the halogen having a prefix chloro, bromo, iodo etc. The name of this compound is chloroethane. So, prefix chloro is attached to hydrocarbon name that is ethane. So, hence the name chloroethane. Now, let us see what is the suffix where it can be added. Suffix means at the end. Here you are seeing one more organic compound. This is ethanoic acid. How many carbons are there? You are seeing one and two. Now, here eth two carbons, n single bond, oic acid because carboxylic acid is there, right. So, like this we are using prefixes and suffixes according to the compound. Identify the number of carbon atoms in the compound. How many are there? So, what is the name based on the carbon chain? hexa. Between the carbon and carbon only single bond is observed hence a n e hexane. So, according to the rules you have to call this one as hexane. This is the hydrocarbon belongings to alkane. Here root word that is the carbon number suffix at the end what you are adding. So, that gives the name of a particular hydrocarbon. Now, here you are seeing the carbons C1, C2, C3, C4, C5 and C6. Then you have to take a root word or prefix that is the meth, eth, prop, bute, pent and hex. Similarly, suffix if it is the hydrocarbon, so you have to add a n e single bond. If it is having double bond e n e then y n e if it is triple bond, if the carbon number is 1 then the name of the hydrocarbon is methane. If it is 2 name starts with the eth, if it is double bond e n e, if it is triple bond y n e prop y n e propine. Similarly, but plus a n e butane. Similarly, pent plus in double bond alkene, so pentene. Then finally, hex 6 carbon atom, e, e n e means double bond, a n e means single bond, here triple bond, so y n e. Like this, you can use these prefixes while naming any other organic compound. Remember, when a compound is given to you, first you have to check how many, how many number of carbons are there. If it is having a 5, then you have to start with the name pent. You have to start the name of the compound with the pent. Then you have to observe whether it is having single bond or double bond, triple bond. Respective suffixes you have to add. Further, sometime we have a functional group attached to these, then you have to attach a secondary suffix. This is the important mnemonics for you. You can easily remember the first four members with the help of this mnemonics. What is that? Monkey eats peeled bananas. Here, M stands for meat, carbon 1. 
its e stands for eth which has carbon 2 then peeled p stands for probe it has carbon 3 then bute which is having 4 carbon atoms bananas like this you can make your own mnemonics 5 carbon onwards it will be very easy already you studied pentagon hexagon heptagon octagon in mathematics if the name of the functional group is to be given as a suffix and the suffix of the functional group begins with oval a e i o u alcohol oil aldehyde al carboxylic acid oic oic acid in such cases you have to drop last letter of hydrocarbon methane ethane propane butane in all the cases you are having e last letter e is replaced and you are adding those secondary suffixes that is how you are naming a functional group suffixes begin with the ols a e i o u are listed here the first one alcohol how to identify if the organic compound having o h you can easily identify it is an example for o h alcohol what is the suffix then yes oil oil then aldehyde CHO group AL aldehyde AL then ketone on that is the suffix then carboxylic acid OIC oic acid like this a few suffixes are given here now you understood how to name the organic compound because you are very intelligent kids right yes now naming the ketone with the three carbons what is the name three carbon what you have to call so it is propane already you know all the organic compounds are derived from hydrocarbons because hydrocarbons are the parent compounds of all organic compounds now prop means three carbon n means single bond between carbon and carbon remember between carbon and carbon then you have to drop e propane minus e is equal to propane so you are seeing here e is removed prop means three carbon and n means single bond so propane plus on propanone this is how to name the organic compound yes i think you understood this one if the carbon chain is unsaturated that is having double bond you have to add e and e if it is having triple bond you have to add y and e okay now what is this c386 how to write first you have to write three carbons start writing yes three carbons you have to draw yes after drawing the three carbons what you have to do how many hydrogens are there six hydrogens you have to distribute among the three carbons now count the valencies satisfied i did not wrote the double bond hence i have to satisfy the fourth valency here you are seeing only three lines the fourth one i had to draw where i had to draw now check the valency of each carbon after writing the skeleton structure you have to count the valencies you have to satisfy the valencies if there is no hydrogen means you have to satisfy with bond between the carbons i hope you understood this one if you are committing the mistake obviously it is in a round double or triple bonds this is the secret okay now let us understand a triple bond how to write a triple bond this is th c3 h4 first you have to draw three carbon atoms okay in a row now that is by the valencies remember children here only four hydrogens are there 
So, 3 carbons are there obviously it is having high unsaturation means there is a triple bond. After that you have to satisfy the valencies. Now, see here I am writing in a different way. So, check here 1, 2 other side also 1, 2 you have to satisfy the valency of these 2 carbons. How to satisfy? Just between 2 and 1 between first and second carbon yes you have to put a triple bond yes you are putting triple bond now count the valence is 1. So, 2 3 4 for this carbon so 3 are here fourth one is here right. So, this indicates tetravalence is satisfied now you can cross check the formula that is C 3 H 4 is there right. Now, based on the set of rules try to name this one how many carbons are there 1. So, what is the name meat monkey eats peeled bananas m meat how many bonds are there 4 tetravalence is satisfied 1 carbon means single bond means it is methane what is the formula CH 4 right yes what is this? This is how many carbons? 2. Yes, here you are seeing the wonderful structure of ethane. So, 2 carbons hydrogen 6 single bond means eth plus n ethane only hydrogen and carbon are represented here. This is the ethane. Now, check I have wrote I hope you wrote this one. Now, what is this? How many carbons are there? Now, let us move on to some functional groups. While naming you are seeing here E is replaced, OL is attached. So, this is methanol. Similarly, what you are seeing here? Here you are seeing hydrogen is removed, OH is attached. This is called as alcohol because OH group is there. So, carbon 1 hence you have to write meth single bond N OL is OH is attached. So, OL hence the name methanol. What is this? This is the second one ethane here we removed E and attached OL hence it is ethanol. Now, try to write the structure of next 3 members you have to check whether they are in homologous series and you have to give the reason. First you have to check what is the difference between 2 successive members if it is a CH2 formula you need then it is a then it is a homologous series. So, I hope you wrote these structures. Now, let us move on to next one next functional group is ketone if it is having a C double bond O. Okay, ketones propenone is the first member see E is replaced with O N E then you are getting a propenone this is the first member. Here you are seeing the structure of that is the propenone this is the propenone here you are seeing two hydrogens are removed and one oxygen is added right try to write the structure. Now, let us study butanone what you have to do yes remove E add O N E then you are getting butanone this is the structure of butanone how many carbons 4. Now, in the second carbon so you are writing a double bond O by removing 2 hydrogens of butane. Now, try to write the structures of next 3 members of ketones are these also forming homologous series explain observe the structures carefully how to convert alkenes into ketone you are seeing here. For ketone remember children C double bond O should be in the middle that means ketone the first member of ketone is 3 carbon compound that is the propanone 
now you are seeing one more functional group aldehyde methane from which you are removing E and you are adding Al then what happens methanol. So, structure of the methanol see here methane E is removed and Al is attached methanol Al means aldehyde. Now, let us study one more structure that is the ethane plus Al ethanol right. See E is added and you can remove by removing the E you are attaching Al then you are seeing ethanol. So, now see how to make methane into methanol CHO group is attached to H then you call that one as methanol. Similarly, a CHO group is attached to CH3 CH3 CHO is ethanol. Observe this structure and try to write you have to write next three members of this series are they form homologous series explain the next functional group that is haloalkenes. Here we are using chloro and bromo as prefixes let us study that one chlorometh plus n chloromethane see here CH 3 Cl is attached one hydrogen is removed then chloroethane eth means carbon 2 yes here Cl is attached this is the chloroethane carboxylic acid COH group and its name ends with OICOic acid carboxylic acid. The first member of the series is methanoic acid this is the structure of methanoic acid how many carbons only one it should have a C O O H this is the carboxylic acid group double bond O single bond O H if it is present in same carbon atom containing a double bond O and O H then you call that one as carboxylic acid carbon 1 methanoic acid ethanoic acid eth carbon 2 n between the carbon atom single bond oic acid COOH is there. See here CH3 COOH ethanoic acid or acetic acid. Now propanoic acid CH3 CH2 COOH propanoic acid carbon 3 and a COH group is there including COH there should be total 3 carbons. Now, write the next 3 members of this series and check whether they also form a homologous series or not. They are forming homologous series you know this one very well. Now, this is the combustion means burning what do you mean by this? any organic compound burnt in air it produces either carbon dioxide carbon carbon monoxide in addition to this it may produce water and also it will produce large amount of energy in the form of heat and light that is said to be what combustion what are you seeing here carbon particulate matter, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide and energy is produced. I think this animation helps you to remember the combustion process. If it is only allotropic form of carbon there is no water because there is no hydrogen right. Now, let us see this process with the help of equations that will be more comprehensive to understand the combustion. Now, the reactions are allotropic form of carbon coke coal charcoal anything. So, C plus O 2 produces C O 2 and then heat and light that is the energy. Similarly, when methane hydrocarbon is oxidized 
this is the natural gas yes natural gas also source of energy now it produces carbon dioxide water heat and light similarly ethanol which is used in the laboratory in the spirit lamp ethanol plus oxygen produces carbon dioxide water and heat plus light now you have to do one more thing what is that you have to balance the equation if not now let us move on to next one let us perform very simple activity that is what you have to do let us take three important carbon compounds naphthalene balls available at home you have to take care while doing these activities under the supervision of your parents only you have to do or with the teacher only you have to do now you have to take naphthalene balls camphor and alcohol or a spirit spirit contains methanol so you have to take one by one in three different spatulas or you have to conduct activity one after other now you have to burn these three compounds observe the nature of the flame whether it burns with black smoke or not you have to check observe the nature of the flame and note down these things then also place a metal plate above the flame check you are getting a black deposition over the plate then you have to check what is that whether saturated or unsaturated see based on the flame we can tell many things how to do this one now let us perform another activity light a bunsen burner or a gas stove and adjust the air hole at the base to allow little bit amount of oxygen or air through that hole then you will see different colored flames so when do you get yellow or sooty flame when do you get a blue flame let us do the experiment now what is this why the flame flame is yellow is red what will you understand with this at the base there is a hole you can regulate amount of air entering into the stove so when you close it it burns with yellow flame usually saturated hydrocarbons will generally give clean flame while unsaturated hydrocarbons these undergo combustion and produce yellow colored flame and also you will find a lot of smoke now what is naphthalene what is camphor and what is spirit which is saturated and which is unsaturated what you observed in the previous activity yes you are right the first two are unsaturated the next one spirit or ethanol is saturated one there is no smoke deposited during the burning of spirit now let us perform one more activity if you partially close the air hole what happens let us check observe the flame clearly what are you observing see what is this why this happened so we can regulate or entry of oxygen into the combustion process and you are seeing here incomplete combustion which produced now you understood why the stove produces yellowish flame if it is producing yellowish flame you should understand there is a blockage in the air hole so you have to clean the gas or kerosene stove used at home has inlets for 
this air so that sufficient amount of oxygen is available for the combustion to produce a cleaner blue flame. When it is blocked you will see the yellowish flame just now you saw. Now let us see if it is yellowish flame what happens? What is this? Hmm, now you understood was the reason for this because incomplete combustion produces these kind of black deposits at the bottom of these cooking vessels right. Now you can save the fuel and control the pollution because if the blockage is removed sufficient amount of oxygen is available for combustion and more energy is produced and carbon monoxide can be controlled. Hence, you have to clean the air holes of these stoves. What is this? Here you are seeing emission of some poisonous gases along with the smoke. It contains oxides of sulfur, oxides of nitrogen which may lead to pollution. They are responsible for air pollution and also causes yes, acid rain. Hence, you have to control the use of these things. Dear children, till now you studied many concepts. Let us test what you learnt. Are you ready? Yes, this is the quiz time. The first question product of incomplete combustion is carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, nitrogen dioxide and sulfur dioxide. What is the answer? The answer is carbon monoxide. Next question, if the formula of ethanol is C 2 H 5 O H then its general formula C n H 2 n plus 2 O H, C n H 2 n O H, C n H 2 n plus 1 O H, C n H 2 n minus 1 O H. What is the answer? The answer is C n H 2 n plus 1 O H. The next question name the fourth member of alkyne. Remember fourth member of alkyne ethyne, pentyne, propyne and butyne. What is the answer? The answer is fourth member that is the pentyne. Now, we came to last section that is the homework. Explain isomerism with examples. Now, the homework explain the isomerism with the examples or the structural isomers are possible for bromopentane and bromopropane right all the possible structures. It is related to previous class as well as today's class. Then explain the combustion with the suitable examples. I hope you are writing down these questions. Then let us move on to next question. The next question is what is this? It is ball and stick structure of propenone. Now, what you have to do? You have to change this one into aldehyde. How will you do this one? Is it possible to make a ketone with two carbons? Think these are little bit higher order thinking questions you have to think and you have to do. Till now you studied many important concepts these will be foundation for next classes. So, let us meet in the next class that is in the fourth session of carbonyl compounds till then bye bye namaste.